But um, this this song goes back to oh my god, my friend. You know, like I was saying before earlier, I do a lot of kilometres because Australia is so big. I do about a hundred thousand kilometres a year, and um, my van and my car that I had break down all the time. And uh, this this particular song is about the experience that was, was really bad for about one year. I bought this car and it literally broke down everywhere I went. Uh, it you know it, in really bad situations and. You know, Australia has a lot of different temperatures. We get through extremely hot desert sun and then we get freezing cold. And I, when it broke down, I actually happened to... I mean, it, you know, it's like it's, it's a story tale. It's back out of a movie. I literally bought the car, paid a lot of money for it, paid extra money for a warranty, which means don't ever buy a car in Australia. If you ever come to Australia and you want to buy a car and it says a warranty, throw it away. It means nothing. And literally, I bought this car and I've got one... 100 metres down the road and it just blew up, smoke came out of it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> sort of. It went, I arrived in the city and then I went back to the car yard and I told them and they're like, oh, it's Sunday, come back next week. They just didn't want to know who they were. Like. <laughs> so um, I thought that, you know, that's, that's pretty bad form in Australia. It was, it was just un Australian, as we say. But it was, uh, it was just really bad. And uh, so that just started a whole spell of bad shit that happened with that car. That was the day one. And, um, uh, you know, I'll be touring, like, literally a month later, I was down playing in the snow. Uh, and it was, you know, it was snowing. And uh, my, I busted the tyre, you know, the smallest thing. And then, bang, in the middle of nowhere, the tyre blew. And I'm, I'm talking about the middle of nowhere. The closest house was 400 k's that way. And the next, you know, 600 the next way. <laughs> and uh, snow was coming down, and then I'm like, oh, okay, break time. So I went out, got the spare tire out of the car, and I, you know, look at it, and it's got five holes. And my <laughs> thing's got four holes. So it's not going to fit, you know. And uh, so, you know, for about 20 kilometres past that, I'm driving on three wheels, walking with my mobile phone out the window, trying to get one bar of reception. <laughs> And it never happened to me. My arm's freezing. And I got to a town at about one o'clock in the morning. And uh, it, it, was, it was in the middle of nowhere. And this town had a, in Australia we have supermarkets. For some reason, there's one supermarket company that's open all night. And uh, so I walked in there and bought a blanket. <laughs> they were, I think they were for cats. Not for, for dogs or cats. They're only about one meter blankets. <laughs> I bought a couple of those. So I wrapped myself in these blankets because there was no hotels, nothing in there, and uh, and uh, I survived. Uh, and then and, and then it just kept on happening with this car. So I, I wrote a song about that, and I mean the story just isn't get better. I should, I, I'll tell you the whole story. And then even uh, I talk about this. I used to talk about this a lot in Australia. And, I, and I, the car yard that I bought it from was called. It was from Sydney, you know, called Sydney Motors, and I. Just, you know, I get to play in front of a lot of people in Australia and I could bag the shit out of them everywhere I went. Um, I don't know if that's the right term, but I just basically sledged them. Everywhere I went, I just went, don't go to them. They see the dodgy cars. And I got in a lot of trouble because, you know, the radio station, the, the guy that owned the car yard, was, his arms were bigger than my body. <laughs> uh, massive. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, that sort of guy. And, um, and threatened to kill me and all that sort of stuff. And then, uh, so, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a musician. I'm gonna, I can't lie. I'm going to tell you the truth everywhere I go. So I bagged it everywhere I went. And then I, I played at this um, at a festival and someone asked me, oh, can you play at our wedding? Like, can you, oh, it was an engagement party. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'll play at that. <laughs> and uh, I got there and it was fantastic. It was kind of a bit of a party vibe. I've been getting married, drinking a lot of alcohol. And then I, did this spiel about, you know, do not buy a car from Sydney Motors, they're a bunch of assholes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to say that lightly, but that's basically what I said. And I, I paid them out, and, uh, and it was all good, and they're like, yeah, okay, stop, stop Sydney Motors. And then it was all fantastic, and then I packed my gear up, and then I walked off, st I walked off stage, and a guy tapped me on the shoulder and said, uh, the guy that owns this mansion, this is a mansion house on the water of Sydney and the harbour, beautiful harbour. He goes, he owns that car yard. He actually owns that car yard. And, uh, I was like, 
Did you get paid? I got paid. Okay. It's like funny because all the it was it was a young couple that got married. They were they're in their twenties and they're like, yeah, yeah. that guy. Yeah, they had no idea that their their uncle. The uncle owned that house and owned that car yard. It was amazing. I, I, I thought I was going to get killed. And then I packed my gear up, got out of there. And then about a year later when they got married, they called me up and said, can you play our wedding? <laughs> and I, see, that's the thing. That, that was the, the turning point in the whole story because I thought, what are they doing? They, get, like, they realised that I paid out their family, and, um, and especially on national radio, on the radio station. In that, in that city, uh, and uh, I thought I had no idea. I thought oh, they're gonna like chop me in little pieces and put me in a box. <laughs> they're gonna kill me. I'm a, a musician that can't afford anything, but uh, they um they, they did. They I, I played that song again at their wedding, <laughs> and I survived. And I'm still friends with those people. <laughs> But thank God, they're like, you know, their, their uncle was not there. He wasn't there at the engagement and he wasn't there at the wedding. Otherwise, I think I would have been not here yeah, today. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, this is a long story for a bit of a dance rebellion song. I don't know what you call it. It's kind of like a stompy dance song, a blues and roots Australian version of something. It's like mixing all your weirdest agreements together. This is a song that came out of that. But anyway. Here we go. Don't be that man, don't be that man, don't be that man, don't be that man. 